woke up in shock to find my face covered in bandages. My face! This can't be happening! Right, Callum? Tell me this is not happening! <laughs> right after, the doctor entered the room. Miss, unfortunately, the glass from the car window has caused extensive trauma to your skin. As the doctor continued talking, I felt myself zone out and began to panic. My face is everything! Without it, my singing career is over! Ash, it's gonna be okay. I'll help you find a way to return to the stage. I promise. Hi, I'm Ashley, and I had a dream of becoming a famous singer. I used to sing on the streets to collect a few dimes. Then one day, a handsome and polite man approached me. I'm Callum, a talent scout, and I believe with your angelic voice and rare beauty, you have the makings of a star. It was love at first sight, and not only did I gain a manager, but also a hot boyfriend. He arranged for me to perform at cafes, bars, and restaurants. It was nonstop. I enjoyed it, but I have to admit I was also, uh, exhausted. And that's when Callum suggested that I use autotune and lip sync to save my throat. Babe, I know this ain't right, but you're burned out and I can't bear seeing that. You know, it's not forever. I think that way you can focus on dressing up and letting people admire that gorgeous face of yours. Hearing this did make me feel sad, but Callum knew what he was talking about, so I trusted him. While the fire inside me to perform on a professional stage still burned strong. Then one day, he told me some unexpected good news. No more small gigs. The famous company Dream M Entertainment is holding auditions to find their next big star. I've taken care of everything. You just need to be 100% confident in performing. This was it. My time to shine has finally come. But then that evening, while driving home and practicing singing, I had an uncontrollable coughing fit. I lost focus of the road for a split second and didn't see the incoming car until everything went dark. And the next thing I knew, I was waking up at the hospital looking like Frankenstein and certain that my big dreams were now in shatters. After two months in the hospital, most of my scratches healed, but only a deep cut scar remained on my cheek. Just a few days more until the audition, and I couldn't show up looking like this. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Can makeup cover it? Or maybe a mask? There must be something. But the doctor said I can't wear makeup until it's fully healed, as it might cause an infection. <laughs> and if I went on stage in a mask, people would certainly raise questions. Then Callum's eyes suddenly darted to the photo on the shelf. Ash, here's your answer. Get your sister to be your double until your wound heals. Y you mean Bridget? That freak? No way! Yeah, I do have a twin sister, but we aren't close, for sure. My parents divorced when we were seven, and the courts decided I'd live with dad and Bridget with mom. I had a great life with dad as he bought me any outfit I wanted. But Bridget was a tomboy and didn't care about fashion. The last time I saw her, she was wearing all faded clothes. I guess the whole moody, loner, frown-like-she's-constipated look was her vibe. I tried talking to her at college, but she always snubbed me. And just like that, we ended up being strangers, despite being siblings. And now you say I have to grovel her for help? No! I get that you guys aren't close, but surely you can put your differences aside for this once-in-a-lifetime chance at your dream? <sighs> I suppose Callum has a point. So I agreed. Only it wasn't that simple, as I didn't have Bridget's number and she refused to use social media. You know, to match her cool, unbothered vibe. Ugh. Hang on. I remember her scowling at me behind the counter at the Yo-Yo fast food once. Perhaps she still worked there? I immediately disguised myself and headed there. Oh, there she is. I started hovering around her and explained what had happened, then asked her if she'd be my double for the audition. But she didn't bother to care. Get out the way. I can't perform looking like this. Please, this is everything to me. It's none of my business. I have work to do. See, I can't just give up like this. So I ordered food and sat there and waited for her to change her mind. It was closing time already. I was about to leave when I saw Bridget and her boss quarreling with each other. My gosh, this is why it's never good to hire teenagers. I only hired you because you begged for the job. I I'm sorry, sir. I'll... <gasps> Darn it. Starting today, you will work without pay for three months. No, sir, I need money. You didn't even pay me last month. Hey, what are you doing? Go. You can work elsewhere. Don't be here with a scumbag. What? And you? Get lost before I report you to the cops. What you aiming at? Why do you have to work here anyway? Doesn't mom give you a big enough allowance? Don't pretend like you care. How could a spoiled girl like you ever understand? What do you mean by that? Ugh. 
anyway, you need money, right? I can help you. Bridget didn't answer, but I saw through her a Miss Frosty persona. If you replace me until I'm recovered, then I'll pay you. A big check worth ten times what you're making here. By the way, only two of us and my manager know about this, so don't worry. Then I gave her my number and told her to message me when she made a decision. She reluctantly took it, saying nothing, and just left. But that evening, a message from an unknown number popped up. Okay, I'm in. You better pay me right. I immediately called Callum and told him the good news. Now it's time to turn Bridget into a temporary me. Normally, Callum and I keep our relationship low-key to maintain professionalism. And that's the same now. We're keeping it a secret with Bridget. Callum made it clear to Bridget that all she needed to do was to look pretty and lip sync. But geez, that girl could only moan. This crop is too tight and constricting. Stop scratching like a monkey. I showed her how to stand straight and walk like a diva. And it shocked me when she said she'd never heard of skincare. No wonder her skin was as dry as the Sahara Desert and her pores were as deep and large as black holes. No worries. The witches here will give you a magic transformation. Wow. She looked exactly like me, just without the wound. <sighs> Even Callum was impressed. He instantly offered to help her into the car and drive her to the audition. Mm, I guess it made sense for Callum to keep her on our side. Now is not the time for stupid jealousy, Ashley. I disguised myself as Bridget's assistant and nervously waited backstage. The audition was such a nightmare. Bridget's lip syncing didn't match the pre-recorded audio, and she danced like she had two left feet. Finally, the performance ended, and the first judge to comment was David Knight, a.k.a. the music wizard, master composer, and lord of melodies. Oh, I know this guy. He's sure a demigod in real life. Your singing was dismal, and your dancing was catastrophic. Did you get lost looking for the bathroom and wander on stage by accident? Having a pretty face isn't enough to keep you here. The judge sitting next to David suddenly grabbed the mic. Wait, he's the CEO of Dream M. <clears throat> Uh, you're wrong, David. Beauty is also talent. She's a diamond in the rough and only needs a little polishing to shine. After the show, Callum was overjoyed as he informed Bridget that she'd become a talent at Dream M and would soon become an A-lister. I was so excited, too, that I flung my arms around Bridget, but she coldly pushed me away. Enough for today. Since then, the three of us agreed that Bridget would perform on stage while I would record at the studio. The bad side was about putting up with David, the difficult judge at the audition who was in charge of my recording session. The only thing going for you is your face, so why hide it behind that mask? If you must know, I didn't have time to apply any makeup. Satisfied much? Sorry, what you say? It was too early in the day to deal with such a jerk, so I stayed silent and focused on the session. Hmm... Your singing has improved significantly since the audition. It just still lacks some emotion. Haha, <laughs> thanks. My debut was just days away, but things didn't go so well. Bridget had no sense of style and appeared in the fashion column Worst Dress Lists, shaking like a leaf on stage and jumbling her words when facing impromptu interviews. So I had to set up a crash course for Bridget, but this time I taught her simple, easy-to-remember things instead of big stuff like last time. I showed her how to pair basic outfits, how to deal with the press, and most importantly, I still guaranteed her regular pay. Ash, you, um... You've helped me a lot, and I, anyway, so, uh, thanks. Oh my, she was so awkward, but that was sweet. I could gradually feel that we were actually sisters. Bridget, the main effort was still yours. Keep it up. Soon, the company began to promote Bridget, and her reputation skyrocketed. All the while, my relationship with Callum took a nosedive. At previous events, Callum used to pamper me and bring me my favorite foods. But now, he just brought Bridget's favorites. He never left her side, and they were always having cozy chats. So one day, I decided to talk straight to him about this. Callum, I have to admit that I feel kind of uncomfortable, as you're a bit too close to Bridget. Babe, I got you. I have to pretend I'm with Bridget as everyone thinks she's you. I'm doing this for your own good, so stop overthinking. Will you do it for me? I know, but I really feel insecure since I got this scar. It's like I've lost everything. Don't worry, the scar will eventually heal. The most important thing right now is you stay calm and get through this time. Ah, right. I suddenly forgot that I was working for a greater goal. 
I tried convincing myself that they were just dedicated to their work and that my wound would be healed soon and I could go back to being me. I still go to the hospital every week for follow-up and treatment. It's faded, hasn't it? I needed to escape, so I went to the studio to sing my heart out. I was certain no one would be there at this time of night, but turned out I was wrong. Surprisingly, on seeing me, that dude didn't shoo me away. Instead, he was actually pleasant. A night owl too, huh? Start singing then. I'll give you my valuable opinions. I was shocked by this approachability, but I rolled with it. David was many things, but there was no denying he was extraordinarily talented that made huge hits. I sing, and he gave me some useful tips and pointers. I believed you'd be too haughty to listen to my guidance, but it turns out I was mistaken. Well, I found you annoying at first, but I appreciate your help and I value your feedback. It seems there's actually a nice guy behind the ogre front. S sorry, what you say? I won't say it twice. Then I started humming a few lines from a song I'd written, but didn't realize I was singing it out loud until it was too late. That song is good. Whose is it? Uh, actually, I wrote it. No need to be mocking. No, I'm not at all. I didn't know you had a talent for songwriting. Come here. Let me hear the whole song. So we sat down together, and surprisingly, our vibe matched each other perfectly. Actually, you're the first person to take my ability seriously. Sorry? Hey, stop pretending! Actually, I'm not pre- Gradually, Bridget seemed to figure out how to act like me, and her popularity grew. She was no longer sluggish and paid more attention to her appearance. Even Callum mentioned how he could only distinguish us by my wound. From then on, Callum said Bridget could do it herself, so they went to the shows without me. This feeling is making me squirm. On the one hand, I want Bridget to do well to help me out. On the other hand, I'm also feeling a bit resentful that I was replaced so easily. I also miss the way Callum used to care about me. But I remember what he said the other day, and I know I shouldn't be acting like a child. So I tried to distract myself by doing what I love the most, singing. Everybody was packed with Bridget's show, so this world is mine. Woohoo! I was in the studio practicing my new song when suddenly David barged in. Can you explain to me why you're here whilst also performing on TV live? W why are you here? Does it even matter now? Who really are you? I begged him to keep quiet. Then I frantically took my mask off and told him everything. I mean, everything. As I was too shocked to make any excuses. This is insane. I know it isn't right, but, but I, I promised once my wound healed, everything would go back to normal. Singing is everything to me. David remained silent for a while, then blurted out, All right, if what you said is true, I will keep your secret. And one more thing, if you really like singing and songwriting, I can continue to help you. What do you say? Y yes, yes, totally, yes. And don't you dare lie to me. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. Yeah, swear to God. Finally, it was the follow-up day. As the doctor finished the examination, I saw him frown. I'm sorry to inform you that the scar cuts too deep. It may fade over time, but I'm afraid it won't go completely. At least in two years. I broke down. This couldn't be happening. <laughs> Not knowing what else to do, I decided to go and find Callum. But when I arrived at his house, I saw that he wasn't alone. Bridget and Callum were sitting together and slowly leaning for a kiss.